and this is so powerful like uh, this interconnection this moment that you understand that your technology actually understood how you feel this doesn't go away What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We're still on site for our second partnership with the Transformative Technology Conference. We're so pumped to be here. We are now going to be talking about augmented mental health. We have George Eleftherio joining us on the show. Hi, George. Hello, Alan. Good. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. We're so pumped for this conversation, George. Your work is incredible with my feel. We're going to dive deep into that. Um, taking the suffering out of mental health so so pumped about talking about that yeah. as before we jump in there's just so much to talk about regarding spirituality and feelings of oneness that we talk to all of our guests about are we really all one uh I think that uh, we are in an emotional level, uh, definitely we are in a spiritual level, uh, Like, but uh, from a mental health standpoint that we see it, we can see how much our emotions affect uh, our surroundings, the, the people around us, our loved ones. Uh, and uh, that's just the manifestation of like being in a united world. Um, so uh, what we see from an emotional health standpoint is our actions, our behaviors not only affect uh, us as individuals, uh, but our families, our loved ones, our friends, and ultimately the world, right? Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's for us the, the, the living proof uh, of, of oneness, as you said. Interesting. So the interconnectedness between all of us at the deepest levels of our psyche regarding emotions and just development, psychological development, and just the way that the butterfly effects work and all the chaos theory that happens. There's just too profound of a level of interconnectedness in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so then that's where the oneness it lies really for, for you. I would say the the one is like for me it starts from the interconnection of the body and the and the spirit and yes, the, yes. of the emotional self and the physical self yes, uh, and yes. we see this again going back to uh, uh, to what science tells us uh, you see uh, individuals that suffer from chronic conditions uh, such as diabetes uh, or uh, cardiovascular disorders uh, actually uh, improving significantly when they take care of their mental health. For us, this is a proof yes. uh, that actually our emotional self with our physical self are very highly interconnected. Uh, and uh, I think from that standpoint, uh, th that's the first level of connection. The second level is how what we do actually affects lives of others uh, on an emotional level and physical level, of course. Yeah, yeah. This is a, such a profound one. Is that the more that you heal um, your mental health state, the more that your physical health heals. And health, Correct. as we know, is number one for your moment to moment. You know, number one feelings of interconnectedness, feelings of health, um, just the most paramount. Absolutely. Um, how about feelings of um, on this topic? Which is the question is, do you think that our disconnection from the feelings of interconnectedness are the root of all of the problems we have well i i, I don't like to generalize uh in terms of like uh like th there's no one reason for the mm. problems that we have however definitely the fact that we don't pay attention to our mental and emotional health uh, and we only take care of our physical health. I think that this affects uh, the way that we live, uh, the stress that we have in our daily lives. We live in an anxiety economy, as uh, as I was reading in an article a few days ago. Whoa, an anxiety economy. Exactly. Damn. Exactly. And uh, you see, all the behaviors that we have in our lives are affected by uh, by actually not taking good care of our uh, inner uh, emotional health. Uh, so for me, absolutely, this plays a, a critical role, of course, in addition with um, physical health and, uh, and other well-being uh, activities that we can do. But definitely uh, the emotional self and, uh, and mental health is, is of primary importance. And then you decided, you know, you, you're, all your answers to all of these questions that you've been answering so far have been emotional well-being oriented. All of your answers are regarding that. I mean, 
it does seem like even though you said that it's it's hard to just generalize a root, mm-hmm. but really this idea of emotional, spiritual well-being um, and interconnectedness is in fact kind of in the answer. Correct. I wa- now you went off and decided to build a solution mm-hmm. using technology, which is kind of interesting. Sure. Okay, so now teach us about what was this moment for you that you were like, aha, I want to go and take on this project and build this, and then what exactly is the MyField solution? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so uh, a, f- a few years ago, I was uh, I was a management consultant. I was with McKinsey in New York. Uh, I was working uh, uh, between uh, 80 and 100 hours per week Uh, So it was uh, pretty hectic and one of the things that I was not doing was paying attention to my emotional and mental health. Uh, Actually, was not paying attention uh, to anything other than work at the time. Uh, And uh, one one day after uh, a a long and uh, difficult project, I woke up and I just could not breathe. Uh, And this was the manifestation of like... uh, not taking care of my emotional self uh, to my physical health. Uh, my gosh, so you just woke up and I couldn't breathe. Yeah, couldn't inhale. I, I was I had, I had trouble to inhale. Yeah, it was it I was uh, I, had, I had a bit trouble to inhale, and actually it, it was a panic attack. Uh, this wow. is what it was. Uh, like at the beginning, I didn't know that, so I, I went to my uh, to my physician, and he told me we're fine, all, everything's good. I would recommend Just get back to the, your 80 to 100 hours. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, you're fine physically, but you need to, to visit the psychotherapist. So um, I visited the therapist uh, shortly after. Um, we started having a few discussions uh, for a few weeks, uh, and then the panic attacks went away. Uh, and But what stayed was the realization that... Uh, we don't receive any support uh, for our mental health. That was one, yeah. and also that when you uh, when you receive psychotherapy or any type of mental health support, there is no uh, objective data. There is no technology involved. Uh, like uh, when I was having this panic attack, I didn't know that it was a panic attack. Uh, so yeah, like yeah. Uh, all, uh, so that was the inspiration behind starting uh, uh, our company. Uh, my, my co-founder also, uh, Haris Sirbas, uh, who is a PhD in biomedical engineering, yeah. and he's really the brains of the company and what we are doing, was doing his PhD uh, at the time, and he was working on how we can use data from different sensors mm-hmm. in order to uh, identify human emotions or other insights so for, for, for healthcare, yes. So those two came together, I would say, both, uh, both our experiences, because yes, he had yes. struggled with... Uh, uh, with anxiety as well, uh, our, our personal experiences, struggling with uh, with our mental health, plus his subject matter expertise, made us start this company uh, with the mission of taking the suffering out of uh, mental health. Yes. Uh, and uh, making everyone in the world uh, living joyful and fulfilling lives. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, so, going back to what we are doing, we are developing, we are bringing objective data to the field of mental health for the very first time. We're developing a sensor uh, that can recognize your emotions throughout the day. We can tell if you're stressed, if you're angry, if you're happy, if you're sad. And then uh, by using this data point and cognitive behavioral therapy, we help individuals that suffer from anxiety, depression, stress uh, uh, to improve their mental well-being and emotional well-being. This Uh, is a very complicated thing. Okay, of course it requires a a co-founder in biomedical engineering sure. PhD that is has been studying this but now the big question is what biometrics are you taking in sure. how do you parse those for some sort of signal and then what sort of cognitive behavioral therapeutic intervention sure. do you deliver after gaining this profile of this person how often are you taking these data stamps? Sure. All this type of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. So uh, to 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 start from the from from the latter, we we have an end to end holistic solution for depression, anxiety, and stress and burnout uh, that involves our technology, uh, which is doing the remote patient monitoring on someone else. Uh, in other medical fields, we would call it. Uh, we have uh, the mobile application through which we deliver real time proactive interventions. Uh, uh, to uh, to improve the mental well-being of an individual, we have a licensed therapist in our program who is getting those data, and they can uh, one intervene in real time as well as 
uh, use this data to improve the effectiveness of their psychotherapy sessions. And then we have um, uh, an educational, psychoeducational curriculum through which individuals and participants in our program develop lasting coping skills for uh, for mental health. Uh, so uh, that's like uh, that's our offering. We are offering our program through health plans, employers, and uh, life insurers. Uh, and uh, and the way that. Um, and at the moment, we're already active here in California and, uh, and in Europe as well. Uh, we will be expanding soon enough. Uh, going what, back a, what a way to get to scale fast is to go exactly. through health plans. Uh, if you can book a big 10,000-person uh, company uh, on board, um, that's a big deal. And it can, it can really help uh, with the emotional um, uh, well-being as well as uh, eradicating suffering. Yeah, and I, th- I hope you were going here, but sure. I, I do still want to ask like, Absolutely. the actual biometrics that sure. you are measuring. Yeah, this is very tough stuff to figure out. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we have, uh, uh, we have more sensors than almost any wearable in the market right now. We're not really a wearable device, but because it looks like a wearable device uh, uh we, we call it a wearable uh we do you have, publicly market what sensors you have on the device sure. so yeah. we have a, a galvanic skin response sensor one that, more time on uh, it. a galvanic skin response a sensor. galvanic skin response, skin response yeah, it response measures sensor. electrodermal activity basically dermal activity yes it's okay. uh, like uh, from the heart uh, it's uh, from the skin so from it's, the skin uh, but it's from but from from heart to skin electrical activity? So we are monitoring the response of the autonomic nervous system to okay. different stimuli. So what happens when you uh, you experience an emotional state, there are physical sensations that unco- uh, that come together with the emotion that you felt, yes, right? Yes. So probably you're feeling your heart pumping ha- uh, faster when you're angry or uh, <laughs> uh, you feel sweating when you are stressed. <laughs> All those are indicators that are telling you that an emotional stimulus just happened Mm -hmm. so uh, through skin conductivity heart rate monitoring skin temperature monitoring interesting uh, we can identify biomarkers uh, that help us classify what you're experiencing right then and there Uh, so skin electrical activity skin temperature and then heart rate variability it's a a variety of uh, of, of of biomarkers from from those sensors so it's not only the variability but But other other uh, and it's all on the wrist and it's able to measure all the way and then this is so ridiculous you're, so you're actually building in a sense this big catalog or library of emotional states related to skin temperature skin electricity uh and heart rate sure, sure. Uh, heart data it's uh, so it's it's at the beginning there are four uh, five main categories is the is joy joy calm sadness and uh, distress as well as the emo- as the state of stress uh, so we have five um, categories, emotional categories that we recognize. At Joy, the calm, uh, s- uh, sadness, uh, distress, distress. Uh, or anger, mm-hmm. uh, basically. And then we have the emotion of stress. And stress. Yes. Okay. So uh, okay. we have those five categories. And uh, based on those, we trigger different interventions. Um, going back to like how... Do you th- trigger interventions even for joy or calm? Yes. Yeah, like to get them more joy and exactly, more calm. Exactly. Oh, interesting. So actually, those are the, some of the most effective ones, interesting. Uh, w- because those are the moments that help you at your time of need. So when you have a joyful moment because you did something that you really enjoyed, we can use that later on at the time that you are stressed and provide you uh, a reminder mm-hmm. of this uh, positive mm-hmm. uh, moment that you had. And then, what kind of a uh, uh, a biometric profile are you reading out that shows you that I'm angry and then what is like your intervention or what if I'm stressed sure. you want what is your intervention so it's a personalized uh, algorithms we're using uh, at the first level we're performing time series analysis of the data in order to identify uh, the areas the moments that you that have significant emotional information uh, that's one of the most difficult things in what we're doing so uh, when we see your data when actually you felt an emotion and when not Uh, so that's the first level of course it's very important to take the noise out of those signals very difficult as well yeah Uh, we have a team of 12 data scientists uh, half of them are post PhD um, working on this for the past uh, three and a half years so it's it's difficult problem to crack Uh, so the first level is taking the noise out of the signals the second identifying where we have uh, the appropriate and important emotional information and then classifying this um, this moment uh, 
uh, in one of the different categories that uh, that we monitor. Uh, so basically, the out of the three uh, signals, uh, three basic signals that we monitor: skin conductivity, um, uh, skin temperature, and heart rate. Uh, we extract over 200 uh, proprietary indicators that uh, we correlate with specific emotions but this is a very personalized model interesting so the 200 proprietary indicators yeah. uh, and then those will tell you about their emotional models exactly. and and this is personalized to the individual right and it's so, also then exactly. even a step further personalized exactly exactly it's different so yeah, the response your response to stress or sadness is different, from, different my from yours exactly. and Brady's, the, cetera, there are yeah. some uh, commonalities uh, that and that's why we do have a pre-trained model uh, but uh, when we actually uh, apply our model to you, we personalize it to make it much more accurate. And uh, right now we, we have accuracy close to 90%, um, both in the lab and outside of the lab, uh, which is, uh, wow. but most importantly, it's not about how we are able to recognize the emotion. The, the important thing is actually by recognizing the emotional state of the person, we help the individual take action exactly. about, about close the loop feedback exactly. happening at the same time stamp exactly. uh, you're and it's via uh like a notification that they're getting that on the correct. device yes that's correct have you guys have you guys went into thinking about other forms of <laughs> of triggering people into uh awakening to uh to the good old shocks or any no. of the other crazy <laughs> there's someone that was actually doing the shocks yeah, for those yeah, states and yeah there's all different types Pop of look yeah I know. I, that's what it is yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i i think they pitched on shark tank i think they did okay. oh, yeah it was okay. just interesting that um there's just some like what other like this modality is like i don't i I hate notifications. All my yep. apps are off on my notifications, etc. My phone's always on silent, you know. So how do I use it if I'm sure. like that? So the what we have seen to be most effective for our users is not to send a lot of notifications, but identifying the important moments within their day three to five moments, no more than those, uh, that are important for them to take action on. Uh, and uh, we say three to five because, you know, if I tell you every five minutes how you feel, it doesn't mean anything to you, right? But yeah. if I select the important moments, the ones that actually uh, you have to do some work on in order to improve, that's uh, that what makes a difference. Uh, so uh, not a lot of notifications, but what we see is that people take a, a, a great action on those notifications. So 80% of the notifications that we give to the user lead to an action. So uh, our users actually interact with their mobile phones uh, with our application close to 40 times per week and they're performing 15 mental health actions as we call them per week. So those actions are either mood journaling, um, breathing exercises, meditations uh, or uh, different exercises that have been assigned to them by the psychotherapist. So they're very engaged. They really uh, and and the the differentiator is the is the data point is because we can tell you when you are stressed yes, yes. and you know th this feeling never never goes away so like I remember the first uh, when we had like our first prototypes I was meditating one day and I I finished my meditation and then I receive a vibration in my wristband a slight vibration which means that um, you had an emotional moment and I go back and I see that while I was meditating I had a, a moment of pure calmness uh, and this is so powerful like uh, this interconnection this moment that you understand that your technology actually understood how you feel this doesn't go away yeah that's that's very profound i like that one it also kind of reminds me of you know strategies that are being used with muse and so many other of the neurotechs um, biotechs that are now available where it is just an immediate closed loop feedback of exactly. you hearing the birds chirp or getting the vibration or all these types of things where you know that you achieved a state of interconnectedness of one unity of oneness whatever um I also want to ask you this question because you, you pointed at it. I think it's very important to, to, to talk about. There's So there's actually an entire... Uh, suite of, of of psychotherapists that are at uh, in within the my feel ecosystem, yep. and then they themselves are reading out the emotional states. That's correct, and they they work with the deployment of these personalized either mood journals or meditations or exercising mm -hmm. or all these different types of. 
and you were that's correct yeah okay. so basically we uh, we're offering our program as an alternative to uh, traditional psychotherapy for depression or anxiety uh, uh, so the the program includes uh, uh, weekly sessions with our psychotherapists uh, usually our sessions are shorter than the usual the typical 60 minutes because of the data that our psychotherapists have uh, in their hands interesting so and video or in person video, video. so it's yeah, video yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so they are doing uh, because they know how the person felt during the week so you walk in the appointment and mm -hmm. your therapist goes okay what happened on Tuesday, Tuesday. and stressed yeah. you so much, much yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you you, yeah. you start right away uh, with a very focused discussion exactly uh, that uh, actually makes the session much more effective and this is what we right hear into again. the car accident or the breakup exactly. or whatever exactly. happened job exactly. career change yeah those exactly of, yeah. exactly and also the other thing is that our psychotherapists are able to help at the time of crisis so uh, remember my example that I woke up and I could not breathe uh, this yeah, was yeah. a panic attack I didn't know at the time, but if I was wearing a, a field device, uh, this would uh, tell me that we see that you're very stressed. Uh, let's do something about it. And if the feeling of this stressor didn't go away, actually it would notify my psychotherapist. And then my therapist would text me and tell me, George, I see that you are really stressed today. Uh, do you want to talk? So uh, we have proactive intervention from the side of the psychotherapist. Uh, it's uh, so uh, what we're doing is basically something that in every other medical field is considered to be a fact, uh, mm -hmm. but in mental health doesn't exist uh, until now. Uh, yeah, bring, yeah. Uh, combining objective data with human interventions and interventions through the technology uh, in order to optimize the outcomes of, of users. And so far, the outcomes that we see are really, really encouraging. So yeah. we see improvements uh, for populations that uh, suffer from mild or moderate anxiety or depression within uh, three to four months, uh, improvements that move those people from suffering from moderate depression to being healthy within four months with no drugs, no pharmacotherapy, uh, just by uh, adhering to our program. Uh, and this is the most important thing. Uh, and uh, hearing what these people say, uh, hearing uh, how these people actually uh, talk about uh, their field wristband as a guardian angel, uh, this is the, the most satisfying thing for us. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, having the uh, people that are using the service call this like a guardian angel um, when your interventions are also so few like you said three or five a day um, it's just concentrated on the most profound um, times for you to reach out to them um, it kind of gives them like a th like the three or five peak emotional moments of your exactly. day catalog it's also very unique like that to be able to like visualize this data in itself is very unique and um, and interesting and so if I don't have a, a health plan I can just sign up on a monthly basis as well we right now we don't have uh, open our program for uh, for direct consumer however we will be conducting a large uh, study uh, uh, so we would be welcoming individuals uh, that uh, have already asked us to participate in the program we are really really fortunate to have many people interested in yeah. uh, in participating uh, so if you are interested or if anyone of, of the people that listen yeah. to us today are interested we would love to uh, to include them in the program in this study and they uh, can sign up myfield.co exactly exactly so they can go to our website just send us a note and we will include them in in the study and the study is looking to be conducted like early next year or something? It's, or? Yes, that is correct. So we'll be starting in January. Uh, 2020. And yep, yes. Yep. Uh, and this is going to be, of course, nothing. This is going to be, of course, their data, fully anonymized. Uh, no one has access to this data. So when I say study, I don't mean that we're going to take the data and uh, use it in any other way. Uh, but what we're trying to do is uh, add many more people into our program to uh, actually evaluate the effectiveness of, sp of specific interventions uh, and calibrate it to make it as effective as possible. Uh, so that's why we, we have opened uh, those studies. So if they go to www.myfield.co, uh, they, uh, they would be able to subscribe to that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. This, this seems like something great for anyone to be able to yeah, sign up for. And, it, and then the question also becomes like, the price of the hardware is expensive. You, did you guys actually have to manufacture that yourselves? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you had to design that and, uh, and then manufacture it yourselves. Is it manufactured in China? In China, China? I guess. And then, so then it's, you know, shipped here or Europe or wherever afterward. And then the cost of that must be at least several hundred dollars for the, 
yeah. we don't uh, charge for the hardware we charge only for the psychotherapy sessions so actually right now if you go to a psychotherapist and the cost of like the out of pocket cost could be 200 300 dollars uh, per hour so our sessions cost uh, just 50 dollars per session uh, and the goal for us is that we have the health plan pay for those sessions instead of the individual so instead of the individual is paying any money out of pocket uh, in order to be able to provide support to as many people as possible uh, we want to, to have the health plan um, the health the plan pays yes. my field then exactly we don't we don't uh, charge for the device so we don't charge anything the, for, the end yeah. user so you provide these companies with the devices for their employees exactly. and then interesting and then you just get paid by the health plan exactly wow very fascinating um i just this this question i must ask because it seems like everything is going in the direction of measuring a constant stream of our biometrics and then mm -hmm. being able to predict pathology or to somehow rejuvenate me to youthful homeostatic capacity or other thoughts about being some sort of an ai coach based on my unique yep. blueprint and gifts that i want to bring into the world does it totally feel like it's going in this direction i i think that uh, the ai will help us deliver uh, a many interventions uh, when we can't have a human delivering those interventions. Uh, we, we don't believe in uh, actually taking the, the human, the psychotherapist, the coach out of the loop. Uh, we still believe that uh, in the relationship, in the therapeutic relationship between the therapist and the individual uh, as being a very important factor yeah. of uh, improving mental health. Uh, so we, we, but we believe uh, strongly in amplifying the human, in using technology, in using data to make the the job of the human much more effective. Uh, and uh, this is what we're trying to do in our model. We we don't want to uh, to take the psychotherapist out of the model. Of course, we want to deliver 24-hour support to our to our users through AI. Uh, but when the psychotherapist is not available to provide this type of support and then the data to the psychotherapist to provide them with uh, the strength, with the power to serve more individuals at the same time in a, in a much better and effective way. Okay. And then this next question then right alongside that one is, do you think that humanity is a biological bootloader for digital super intelligence? Huh. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. How, how are you thinking about that? It's, it's an interesting question. but I ask the questions here, George. <laughs> so I can't ask you even one. Uh, I mean, the like, uh, like if I understand correctly, like uh, you're asking if we're interconnected, not only on an emotional level, but also on a biological level. Is that is that the question? And then is even our evolutionary purpose is the next order of where we're going is literally making digital super intelligence that we act as a biological bootloader for that yeah. digital super intelligence yeah 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 i uh, it, this is a, an interesting uh, subject uh, to be honest a philosophical one i yeah. would say um i think that like uh, definitely th there there are forms uh, that uh, of intelligence that are going to be created in the future uh, that are probably very different from what we have right now. Definitely AI will be able to be doing much of of the things that we probably don't want to do. Uh, there are going to be a few uh, ethical di dilemmas in the in the near future about the relationship of AI and and humans, uh, if you will. Uh, I think that I'm not sure if we are going to be the ones that we are going to empower this super intelligence, this digital super intelligence, uh, I envision and I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to to live and coexist together uh, in in a way that would be actually uh, beneficial to not only to humanity but to the planet as well. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, so I I prefer to see that uh, we're going to have a, a symbiotic uh, yes, yes. relationship with. Uh, with AI and um, and uh, digital and intelligence and different intelligence forms than the ones that we have today. Not that we're going to empower them and then we're we're not, not going to be yes, around yes. Uh, for that. Uh, like I, I I don't like a matrix uh, yes, scenario yes, to yes. happen. I would prefer like a, a life where we, you know, we are able to use AI so we can focus on the more creative stuff mm -hmm. that AI is not good at doing. 
until uh, its permutational capacity just out outplays us by leaps and bounds and then yeah. what yeah 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 it's, it's uh, that's, that's, that's yeah, yeah and, yeah. Uh, and are, is this the first yeah. like um the first generation of ai or are we ai ourselves yeah uh, it's like yeah. it's like a very philosophical discussion interesting one uh but i think that uh, i have a follow-up true what is the purpose of this creation uh of our creation you of, mean of this so uh great question as well um I, I would say it's uh, co f f from my perspective. Again, I can only speak for myself. Is how can we enable collective uh, emotional intelligence? Uh, how we can actually uh, improve that as individuals and as a, a society, as a unison. Um, that 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 would be like my my interesting purpose. you're you're all on like the flowering of consciousness exactly yeah this evolutionary process especially at an emotional well-being level collectively flourishing exactly. and with the entire interconnectedness of all and not just humans but all exactly. all i love this um last question is what is the most beautiful about this about this future about this reality about this creation what is most beautiful uh Again, I, uh, most of my answers are uh, gearing towards like mental and emotional health. Uh, but for me, it's, it's the uh, the absence of suffering uh, that mm -hmm. comes from, in many cases, not only from physical health issues, but also from our behaviors, our mental health. Uh, but not only the absence of suffering, as well as the the existence of vitality and uh, like uh, joy. Yes, yes, uh, yes. For me, it's all about how can we live a life of joy and love. Uh, and yeah. uh, when we are suffering, uh, this makes it much harder to do that. Ooh. George, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you, Alan. It, that was uh, extremely, extremely enjoyable for me. Thank I'm you very so much for having me. I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all the great work with my feel. Holy cow. Likewise. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below in the episode. Let us know what you're thinking on all the epic con conversation points that we hit. Check out the link in the bio to myfield.co. Also, um, Twitter is your preferred platform. Twitter, Facebook. Facebook is good yeah. too. Okay, great. Go follow those links in the bio below as well. Um, hopefully, you can partake in the January uh, 2020 study as well. Go get involved. This sounds super Thank exciting, you. super future-oriented, eradicating suffering, focusing on emotional well-being. Check out the links in the bio below to the Transformative Technology Conference as well. Check out all those links in the bio below. Huge shout-out to them. Huge shout-out to Brady Sprunger. Thank you very much for co-producing. Greatly appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And also, check out the links to simulation in the bio below. Help us grow. Help the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the organizations in your communities grow. You can find our Patreon, cryptocurrency, PayPal links in the bio below. You can also find a cool link to design cool merch and get paid. All those links are in the bio below. Go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Peace.